Welcome friends to a new session on molecular biology. In this session, we will discuss the transcription machinery of prokaryotes and about sigma factor. Prokaryotic transcription machinery. The control of protein synthesis in prokaryotic cells. Our unique genetic makeup is spelled in the DNA molecules that reside in the nucleus in every cell of our body. The mechanism by which protein synthesis is increased, decreased, initiated or stopped is called regulation. Both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells depend on regulatory mechanisms to determine which proteins are going to be synthesized. According to central dogma of molecular biology, genetic information flows from DNA to DNA during its transmission from generation to generation and from DNA to proteins during its phenotypic expression in an organism. The transfer of genetic information from DNA to protein involves two steps. One, transcription, that is the transfer of genetic information from DNA to mRNA and second is translation that is the translation of the information of nucleic acids into that of proteins. RNA synthesis or transcription is the process of transcribing the information from DNA nucleotide sequence into RNA sequence. RNA synthesis is catalyzed by a large enzyme called RNA polymerase. The basic biochemistry of RNA synthesis is common to prokaryotes and eukaryotes, although its regulation is more complex in eukaryotes. RNA synthesis, like nearly all biological polymerization reactions, takes place in three stages, initiation, elongation and termination. RNA polymerase performs multiple functions in this process. The RNA polymerase type involves the correct transcription machinery in prokaryotes. The transcription machinery of eukaryotes is much more complex than that of prokaryotes. The transcription machinery in prokaryotes contains a single RNA polymerase which transcribes all types of genes. But the eukaryotes utilize three nuclear genes that is polymerase 1, polymerase 2 and polymerase 3 to synthesize different classes of RNA. We begin our consideration of uh, transcription machinery in prokaryotes by examining RNA polymerase in E. coli. Single RNA polymerase in Escherichia coli. In bacterial systems like E. coli, a single RNA polymerase, in short RNAP, species is responsible for synthesis of all kinds of RNAs, mRNA, tRNAs and rRNA. This RNA polymerase has been purified and its structure and function is now known in some detail. The E. coli RNA polymerase has a molecular weight of about 480,000 Daltons and consists of five polypeptides including two chains of alpha polypeptide, one chain each of beta, beta prime and sigma polypeptides, the details for which are given in table as well as in the figure. The beta prime subunit is the largest subunit encoded by RPOC gene. It contains part of the active center that is responsible for RNA synthesis and also contains some of the determinants responsible for non-sequence specific interactions with the DNA nascent and RNA. The beta subunit is the second largest subunit encoded by RPOB gene and contains the rest of the active center that is responsible for RNA synthesis. It also contains the rest of the factors for non-sequence specific interactions with the nascent RNA and DNA. The third largest subunit is alpha subunit and is present in two copies per RNA polymerase. Each alpha subunit contains two domains, alpha NTD that is N-terminal domain and alpha CTD that is C-terminal domain. 
The alpha NTD contains the determinants for assembly of RNA polymerase and alpha CTD contains the factors for interaction with the promoter DNA making sequence specific interactions at upstream element containing promoters and non-specific non-sequence interactions at promoters. This is clearly seen in this figure. It also contains determinants for interactions with the regulatory factors. Two of these are identical. Thus, the enzyme contains four distinct polypeptides. The RNA polymerase molecule, the hollow enzyme, has the composition alpha 2, beta, beta prime, sigma, in which attachment of sigma factor is not very resistant so that the core enzyme consisting of alpha 2, beta, beta prime can be easily isolated. The alpha subunits are involved in the assembly of the tetramer core of RNA polymerase. The beta subunits contains the ribonucleoside phosphate binding site and the beta prime subunit harbors the DNA template binding region. One subunit, the sigma factor is involved only in the initiation of transcription. It plays no role in elongation. After RNA chain initiation has occurred, the sigma factor is released and chain elongation is catalyzed by the core enzyme consisting of alpha 2, beta, beta prime. The function of sigma is to recognize and bind RNA polymerase to the transcription initiation or promoter sites in DNA. The core enzyme where sigma is absent will catalyze RNA synthesis from DNA templates in vitro. In doing this, it will initiate RNA chains at random sites on both strands of DNA. In contrast, the hollow enzyme where sigma is present initiates RNA chains in vitro only at sites used in vivo. The sigma factor helps in the recognition of start signals on DNA molecule and directs RNA polymerase for the selection of the initiation sites. In the absence of sigma, core enzyme initiates RNA synthesis in a random manner suggesting the role of sigma in recognition of initiation sites. Once RNA synthesis is initiated, sigma dissociates after RNA is 8 to 9 base pair long and then the core enzyme brings about the elongation of mRNA. The dissociated sigma factor may again combine with the core enzyme to form RNA polymerase hollow enzyme where sigma is present. The alpha and beta prime have constant sizes in most bacteria. The sigma varies from 32,000 to 92,000 Daltons. Although in prokaryotes like E. coli, all RNA synthesis is done by only one kind of RNA polymerase molecules. There may be more than one sigma factors which associate each with the same core enzyme at uh, different times for expression of different genes. For example, in E. coli, besides sigma 70 used under normal conditions of growth, at least three other sigma factors that is sigma 32, sigma 54, sigma 28 are now known which are used under adverse conditions like high temperature, nitrogen deficiency and for chemotaxis. The core enzyme contains the catalytic site. This catalytic site contains two metal ions that is uh, magnesium. In its active form, one metal ion remains bound to the enzyme whereas the other metal ion appears to come in with the nucleoside. Three conserved aspartate residues of the core enzyme participate in binding these metal ions in catalytic site. The overall structure of RNA polymerase and DNA polymerase are quite different. Their similar active sites are the products of convergent evolution. Sigma subunits of RNA polymerase recognize promoter sites. The tetrameric core consisting of alpha 2, beta, beta prime of RNA polymerase is unable to start initiation 
of transcription at promoter sites without sigma factor. Rather, the complete holoenzyme consisting of alpha 2, beta, beta prime, sigma is essential for initiation of transcription at the correct start site. The sigma subunit contributes to specific initiation of transcription in two ways. First, it decreases the affinity of RNA polymerase enzyme for general regions of DNA by a factor of 10 to the power of 4. The core enzyme binds the DNA indiscriminately and tightly in its absence. Secondly, the sigma subunit enables RNA polymerase to recognize the promoter sites. A large fragment of a sigma subunit was found to have a sigma helix on its surface. This sigma helix has been implicated in recognizing the 5 prime TA, TAA, T sequence of the minus 10 region. The holoenzyme binds to DNA duplex and moves along the DNA double helix in search of a promoter, forming transient hydrogen bonds with exposed acceptor groups and hydrogen donor on the base pairs. This process is rapid because RNA polymerase slides along DNA duplex instead of binding repeatedly and dissociating from it or rather than in three dimensions. The promoter site is encountered by a random walk in one dimension. The constant rate observed for the binding of RNA polymerase holoenzyme to promoter sequences is more than 100 times as fast as could be accomplished by repeated encounters moving on and off the DNA. The sigma subunit is released when the nascent RNA chain reaches 9 or 10 nucleotides in length. After its release, it can assist transcription initiation by another core enzyme. Thus, the alpha subunit acts catalytically. E. coli contains multiple sigma factors to recognize different types of promoter sequences contained in E. coli DNA. The sigma factor that recognizes the consensus sequences is called sigma 70 because it has a mass of 70 kilo Dalton. When the temperature is raised abruptly, a different sigma factor comes into action in initiation of transcription. E. coli responds by synthesizing sigma 32, which recognizes the promoter sequence of heat shock genes. These types of promoters exhibit minus 10 sequences that are somewhat different from the minus 10 sequence for standard promoters. In the following figure, a comparison of the consensus sequence of standard promoters sigma 70, heat shock promoters sigma 32 and nitrogen starvation promoters sigma 54 of E. coli is shown. The increased transcription of heat shock genes leads to the synthesis of series of protective proteins. Other sigma factors respond to extreme environmental conditions such as nitrogen starvation. These findings demonstrate that sigma factor plays a key role in determining where RNA polymerase enzyme initiates transcription. Sigma factor. A sigma factor is a protein needed only for initiation of transcription or RNA synthesis. It is a bacterial transcription initiation factor that enables specific binding of RNA polymerase enzyme to gene promoters. RNA polymerase transcribes genes from a specific region of the gene called promoter. The sequences at minus 10 and minus 35 sequences in the promoter region are important for binding of RNA polymerase enzyme for transcription in prokaryotes. The RNA polymerase holoenzyme is found by the association of sigma factor with core polymerase which helps in the promoter selection at the initiation of transcription. The different subdomains of the DNA binding domain of the sigma factor contact the different regions of the conserved promoter. Different sigma factors are used under different environmental conditions. 
These specialized or different sigma factors bind the genes in the promoter region in appropriate environmental conditions and increase the transcription of the genes. Prokaryotic core transcription machinery recognizes the promoter sequence which has minus 10 and minus 35 sequences. The extended conformation of the sigma factor binds to minus 10 and minus 35 sequences of the basal promoter. The NTD that is N terminal domain of each of the two alpha subunits binds to the core polymerase enzyme while the CTD C terminal domain interacts with the upstream promoter elements. To explain the role of sigma factor in prokaryotes in different environmental conditions, we can see the most extensively studied prokaryote E. coli as an example. Sigma factors in E. coli, sigma 70 otherwise sigma A or RPOD. The function is housekeeping sigma factor or primary sigma factor. It transcribes most genes in growing cells and makes the proteins necessary to keep the cell alive. Second one sigma 19, the ferric citrate sigma factor. It regulates the ferric citrate gene for iron transport in prokaryotic cell. Sigma 24, RPOE, the extra cytoplasmic or extreme heat stress sigma factor. It regulates the heat stress when the bacteria are exposed to extreme environmental conditions such as heat. Sigma 28 or RPOF, the flagellar sigma factor that directs RNA polymerase to flagellar late promoters. Sigma 32 or RPOH, the heat shock sigma factor turned on when the bacteria are exposed to extreme environmental conditions such as heat. Due to their higher expression, the sigma factor will bind with the polymerase core enzyme. Other heat shock proteins are expressed which enable the cell to survive higher temperatures. Chaperons, proteases and DNA repair enzymes are some of the enzymes that are expressed upon activation of sigma 32. Sigma 38 or RPOS, the starvation or stationary phase sigma factor. Sigma 54 or RPON, the nitrogen limitation sigma factor. There are also anti sigma factors that inhibit the function of sigma factors and anti anti sigma factors that restore sigma factor function. Structure of sigma factor. Sigma factors have four main regions that are generally conserved. These regions are further subdivided. For example, the region 2 is subdivided into 2.1, 2.2, etc. The region 1.1 in sigma factor is found only in primary sigma factors such as RPOD, RPOS in E. coli. It is involved in ensuring that the sigma factor will bind only the promoter when it is complexed with the RNA polymerase. The region 2.4 recognizes and binds to the minus 10 region in the promoter called Pribno box. The region 4.2 recognizes and binds to the minus 35 region in the promoter. One exception to this organization is in sigma 54 type sigma factors. Proteins homologous to sigma 54 or RPON are functional sigma factors, but they have significantly different primary amino acid sequences. This figure shows the crystal structure of Thermus aquaticus RNA polymerase sigma subunit fragment containing regions 1.2 to 3.1. The crystal structure of a sigma 70 subunit fragment from E. coli RNA polymerase is shown in the following figure. This figure shows the solution structure of sigma 70 region and coming to this figure, it shows the solution structure of a sigma 70 region from 
Thermotoga Maritime. And the following figure shows the crystal structure of E. coli sigma 70 region bound to its 35 element DNA sigma cycle. For a long period, it has been thought that once transcription was initiated, the sigma factor obligatorily leaves the core enzyme, allowing the free sigma to link to another core enzyme and initiate transcription at another site. Thus, the sigma cycles from one core enzyme to another. However, Richard, a bright and co-workers using fluorescence resonance energy transfer, later showed that the sigma does not obligatorily leave the core enzyme. Instead, the sigma factor changes its binding with the core enzyme during initiation and elongation. Therefore, the sigma cycles between a strongly bound state during initiation and a weakly bound state during elongation. The sigma factor helps in recognition of start signals on DNA molecule and directs RNA polymerase for the selection of the initiation sites. In the absence of sigma, core enzyme initiates RNA synthesis in a random manner suggesting the role of sigma in recognition of initiation sites. Once RNA synthesis is initiated, sigma dissociates after RNA is 8 to 9 base pair long and then the core enzyme brings about the elongation of mRNA. The dissociated sigma factor may again combine with the core enzyme to form RNA polymerase hollow enzyme. Let us summarize the following discussion on transcription machinery of prokaryotes and sigma factor. RNA synthesis or transcription is the process of transcribing the information from DNA nucleotide sequence into RNA sequence. RNA synthesis is catalyzed by a large enzyme called RNA polymerase. The transcription machinery of eukaryotes is much more complex than that of prokaryotes. The transcription machinery in prokaryotes contains a single RNA polymerase which transcribes all types of genes. In E. coli, a single RNA polymerase species is responsible for synthesis of all kinds of RNAs, mRNA, tRNAs and rRNA. The E. coli RNA polymerase has a molecular weight of about 480,000 Daltons and consists of five polypeptides including two chains of alpha polypeptide and one chain each of beta, beta prime and sigma. The beta prime subunit is the largest subunit encoded by RPOC gene and contains part of the active center that is responsible for RNA synthesis. Different sigma factors are used under different environmental conditions and increase the transcription of the genes. Now I will give you certain assignments based on the discussions what we had. 1. Explain the role of sigma factor in initiation of transcription. Two. Write short notes on the control of protein synthesis in prokaryotic cells. 3. Explain the role of RNA polymerase in protein synthesis. 4. Discuss the structure and function of sigma factor. 5. Give a brief account on subunits of RNA polymerase enzyme from E. coli. I will also give you certain references for your further reading. The first reference is with the title Biochemistry 5th edition authored by Berg Timisco Stryer in 2008 and uh, published by Freeman and Company, New York, USA. A second book is with the title Cell Biology 7th edition authored by Carp, published by John Williamson, Singapore. A third book is with the title Molecular Biology of the Cell 5th edition and authored by Alberts, Johnson, Lewis, Raff, Roberts and Walter in the year 2007 and published by Garland Science, New York and London. Next reference is with the title Gene 9, authored by Levin in 2007, published by Johnson Barlett Publishers, Sudbury, Masha Schultz. And next reference is with the title Biochemistry, authored by Davidson and Sitman in the year 1997, published by Waverly, New Delhi. Yet another reference is with the title Principles of Genetics, authored by Gardner and Nustad in the year 1984, published by John Willey, New York. One more reference is with the title Principles of Genetics authored by Sinnett, Dunn and Dobosensky in the year 1958 published by McGraw-Hill, New York. I will also give you certain websites for your further reference. 
first one www.bioencyclopedia.org second one is www.oxfordgenetics.com